Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here in Konami. Sure knows how to make me hard. So smash the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that Photon Hypernova subscribe button and also that ding-dong Taco Bell notification bell as we climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. We are currently at 1,074 subscribers, which is above 69, which is nice. So smash us so that we can get on to 1,100 subscribers and you can be part of the Avery Army. What you waiting for, boo-boo? So we got some TCG Photon Hypernova imports and world premieres. Ladies and gentlemen, they imprinted, imprinted? They imported Grave Keeper's Inscription. Now, let me click on the card here, hoping my recording won't stop. It says, at the start of your main phase one, apply one of the following effects until the end of your opponent's turn. Neither player can activate card effects in the grave, neither player can banish cards from the grave, and neither player can special summon monsters from the graveyard. This was in a duelist pack, God knows how long ago, and this card is amazing against tier. It's a Gravekeeper support card, so like if you're playing Gravekeepers, I don't know why, but if you are, uh, then you can search this out with like any sort of Gravekeeper support that searches a Gravekeeper card. It's also a normal spell, which means that you can search it off of the Triple Tactic Tasking, which is now called Triple Tactics Thrust, and it's of course a Secret Rare, probably even a Starlight Rare too. We don't know what the Starlight Rares are besides Mirror Jade, uh, but this card is just absolutely disgusting. I'm so glad that they imported that in from the OCG Duelist pack. Let's see, next up, uh, we have another import. This is a Mini Ruka, it's a common, it's a level four water fish effect monster. Uh, spoiler alert, it actually really sucks. 1500 attack, 500 defense, and it says, when a water monster's effect is activated, quick effect, you can stress on this card from your hand. You can banish one face-up fish, sea serpent, or aqua monster you control, then target one face-up card on the field, negate its effects until the, the end of your opponent's turn. You can only use each effect once per turn. This sucks because it's not a quick effect on the negation. It's only a quick effect on the summoning, which is just kind of irrelevant. So, I mean, Kraken Control can't keep up with tier, and by extension, cash tier anyway, but I mean for a casual deck, sure, but I, I wouldn't pick it up. It's kind of booty. Next up, we have Orfeel the Harmonious Bullfighter Bard. Try saying that 10 times fast. It's a level 8 Light Beast Warrior Effect Monster with 3,000 attack, 2,400 defense, and it can't be normal summoner set. Must be special summoned from your hand by banishing two light and two dark monsters from your hand and or graveyard. Accept this card. If you summon it this way, then it gains 1,000 attack for each monster banished from your hand for its summon. So literally, you just banish two monsters from your hand, and it's 5,000 attack. And it can attack monsters a number of times each battle phase up to the number of monsters banished from the grave for its summon. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, after damage calculation, you can banish that opponent's monster. This card seems really disgusting in theory. Um, two light and two darks. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That, that, that kind of seems a bit pricey, but... We'll have to wait and see. I'm still stuck on the Gravekeeper's in inscription. Like, this is the best port that they could have done because this card's just insane. Which honestly makes me worried that we may not get a ban list until the end of February because Konami may be saying, look, you're in a tier zero ass cheek format. Let's give the TCG another card to fight tier. And it's like, you could give us 20 options, but our side deck's only 15 cards. And even though we may have 20 different plus options, you know, that's going to hurt the consistency of your deck if it doesn't help progress your game state. So, like, can we just have a ban list, please? Like, I was really thinking it was going to drop today on the 27th, and it didn't. Um, at least at the time you're making this video. Next up, we have Diabolantis the Menacing Mantis, which is also a common. It's a level 8 Dark Insect Synchro Effect Monster, 2500 attack, 2200 defense, 1 tuner plus 1 or more non-tuner, so it's generic. And if this card is Synchro Summon, you can, you can send, it says send, but send insect and or plant monsters from your deck to the graveyard up to the number of non-tuners used for its Synchro Summon. If you control this Synchro Summon card, you can target one insect or plant monster you control, treat it as a tuner until the end of this turn, and you only use each effect of Mantis once per turn. Um, I think Naturia just, like, shit their pants at the other side of the room. Like, this card is disgusting in Naturia. You dump the Naturias that you need into the grave, uh, or hell, and even, like, in the insect, like, stun deck or whatever was a thing like a year ago this this card seems really good next up we have xyz align which is a quick play spell you declare a level from 1 to 12 then target two face up monsters on the field including one monster you control they become the declared level until the end of this turn also for the rest of this turn after this card resolves you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except monsters with the same type as a targeted monster you only activate one align per turn um i guess it, it kind of strikes me as like cash tier support because like you could target two monsters on the field, one you control. So, like, you could target two monsters that you control until the rest of this turn after this card is always you can't special summon monsters from the extra except monsters with the same type. Um, but yet they become the declared level. So, I don't know, something interesting. 
Next up, we have Made to Order Mermaid Outfit Outfitter. It's a normal spell, so you can get it out with triple tactic thrusting. You can target one card in your opponent's graveyard, banish it, then you can add one card from your deck to your hand with the same name as that banished card. You can only activate one outfitter per turn. So, <laughs> you're in the cash tier of Mirror Match, and if for whatever reason they have a monster in the grave, which they shouldn't, uh, then you can activate it, banish, say, Fenrir from the graveyard, and grab your own Fenrir. This card is a Mirror Match disgusting card. It's kind of like Lullaby to Obedience in that regard. Then we have all the gold prides. They're like literally gold pride Leon's a secret rare. Then you have a super ultra ultra, a common uh, for the link monster, which just looks like a buff Chad. Crowd goes wild as a secret. Start your engines as a super that the, the archetype's ass. Uh, we have Casa Molar, it's whatever. You have Queen Butterfly Danis as a super. Uh, Quardon Clear Sided as a super. Pharaonic Advent's a super. A Popus is a super. Green Ninja is a super. And then Humongous Hive Hegemon Zex Stagger is a super. Uh, like I said, we don't know what the Starlights are outside of just Mirror Jade. If I had to guess, Triple Tactic Tasking, which is now called Triple Tactics Thrust, which just sounds really nasty, <laughs> um, is a secret rare, and I do predict that Thrust will be a Starlight to go hand-in-hand -hand with the original Triple Tactics talent. But Gravekeeper's Inscription, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if you can get a case of this set for $750... You, you need to go do that like five minutes ago. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be sure to keep you up to date with any more spoilers, and I will see you in the next video.